today we have uh, a new batch of workshop uh, first time from tios on friday and today we have daniel with us from singapore he uh, do air plants <laughs> and his channel name is air plant artisan so you can visit him on instagram he has a lot of types of air plants in his house and he will teach us today how to make our house beautiful uh, with air plants so over to you daniel thank you thank you hello good day to all of you ladies and gentlemen and uh, i'm sure all of you are plant lovers like myself and uh, a very good welcome and i really appreciate that you join me in this channel uh, so that i can share my passionate uh, hobby uh, and of course it's so my passionate and my uh, favorite plant in the whole world air plants right and um yeah greeting from singapore a very small island state in the tropical uh, uh on, on the on the equator right just one degree north of the equator and uh, therefore our uh, weather here is very very warm and uh, we have very uh, uniform high temperature and high humidity right and the reason why i'm sharing this with you because i know a lot of you are from um, a foreign land right and uh, maybe you want to uh, take a reference from where i am in and uh, what kind of climate uh, i am growing this plant so that you have a better idea and therefore you can make adjustment when you grow these plants and of course i want to say a big hello to all my fellow singaporeans uh, thank you for joining uh, in this channel as well. And yes, thank you for your support. <laughs> okay, without further ado, uh, let me um, go into a short introduction of myself. Um, my name is Daniel and um, I'm a Singaporean and I grow air plants uh, as a hobby. However, um, over the last eight years, I have actually, um, well, you can say that I've started to uh, big collections of them. Um, currently, I have about two to three hundred uh, species and hybrids, and I'm going to show you uh, very shortly later what are the different kinds of air plants that I have, and um, it's, I'm, 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 I'm quite sure that you'll enjoy uh, this sharing, uh, sharing session with me later. Right. Sure, sure, um, Daniel. <laughs> so, uh, we would like okay. to know, Daniel, before starting, like, uh, why air plants only? Like, why you started air plants? Well, um, in the very beginning, I actually uh, encountered air plant by chance, whereby I actually encountered and I bought this air plant from a shopping mall. And in the beginning, I, I wasn't too sure what I'm, uh, what I, what I'm, buy, what I'm buying. However, the uh, vendor told me that it's a plant that do not need soil to grow. And uh, they basically, they grow uh, using, um, you know, absorbing uh, nutrients and moisture from the air. So to me, that was something very amazing, right? Because most of us know that plants will need soil because that's where they get the nutrients from. And therefore, I'm very um, so-called um, curious about how this plant, uh, therefore, um, the moment I got this plant and after I, well, kind of manage it quite well and, you know, start to grow it, I realized, um, you know, there are other species. And from then onwards, I, I mean, I couldn't stop. I just keep on buying and, and, and you know, getting new new plants. And that's how I started. That was eight years ago. Oh, great, great, yes. great. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, great. So uh, uh, are you into growing some other things also which require soil or water? Yes. Um, well, I would say that since young, I have this um, so-called, I, I love nature and therefore I love to um, grow a lot of plants too. And uh, I, I mean, there are countless plants that I've tried, uh, you know, roses, succulents, cactus, um, what have you, you know, fruit trees and all this. Mm -hmm. And eventually, sort of like, I, I sort of like tell myself, well, um, I, I know there are something uh, that I, I probably don't like about soil, right? Sorry if I sound a bit biased. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Well, um, yeah, you know, soil comes with certain uh, um, factors that you have to be very careful, like um, um, the type of uh, substrate you're using, the kind of material you're using. And um, I just find that there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of this, um, which I 
well, maybe I don't want to, uh, I don't really enjoy you know, going to soil. And when I know about air plants, I was like, wow, okay, so now I can uh, grow plants without soil, right? So yeah, so that's how I, I you know, been growing so many air plants uh, for the last eight years. That's great. That's great. So it's it's being a long journey for you, like growing air plants from a long time. So, uh, like, yes. uh, uh, like uh, we uh, we know, uh, Daniel, that succulents are the really uh, those plants which grow very uh, slowly. Uh, like uh, we can see the transformation very very slowly. So, uh, like, what right. about the air plants? How much time it takes to have a new pub in it? Oh, well, um, air plants actually they do quite um, slowly too, I must say, um, but not to the extent that you know you can't see the growth at all if you were to give them the right conditions. And of course, um, how fast they grow really depends on what kind of uh, species of air plants that you are keeping. So there are plants that grow relatively faster than the, uh, the others. So mm. um, it really depends on what species they are growing. Yeah. Okay, okay, great, great, great. So these questions keep on coming, Daniel, like uh, uh, either from my side or from our audience side. So we can start the workshop, I yeah. would say all of us are so curious to see this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So I'll um, just, yeah, I'm going to carry on and uh, maybe let me introduce uh, what are air plants to, uh, to, uh, to all of you today. Right, first and foremost, um, air plant is a herbaceous flowering plant that is um, the commonly known as air plant, but then the name is called Tillandsia, right? Tillandsia is the, the, the scientific name for air plants, right? And uh, it actually belongs to the mobilet family. And mm -hmm. uh, mobilet family, one of the very uh, popular and something that we are very uh, familiar with, right, in the same family is the pineapple, right? Oh. Therefore, you can see some similarities with air plants and, you know, the pineapple. Okay, so they are the same family under mobilets. Um, at this point of time, right, there are about um, 500 to 600 uh, species that was uh, um, so-called found in nature. And, uh, and, and, and of course, there are a lot more uh, hybrids, right? And hybrids are actually um, two different species where people hybridize and they become something uh, totally uh, new. And that's why it's called a hybrid. And something very peculiar about air plants, and of course, I think that's the uh, amazing feature, is like over millions of years that air plants have adapted to evolve and um, they have actually um, so-called, uh, they not need roots anymore to uh, extract nutrients and moisture uh, from the, not from the soil, but rather from with their leaves, right? And therefore, maybe I can show you that why air plants look a bit more, uh, special in terms of their leaf is because there's this thing called a trichomes, right? You can see actually the, the look of the air plant typically is quite silvery in color. And mm -hmm. the reason is because there is a coating of a, a, a white cell structure, right? Called okay. the trichomes that helps the plant to absorb nutrients and moisture, okay. right? So that's what makes them so uh, special. And they can be found from uh, all the way from uh, so-called from southern part of USA to right to the southern end of Argentina. So basically, South and Central America are the, uh, the air, where the air plants come from, right? So therefore, um, the plants that I have, actually, they are actually imported from these places. And one very amazing thing uh, too is they, they can be a, a, a family of a plant, but however, they can look completely different from one another. Right, and the reason for it is because they are so widely distributed, uh, in you know, throughout the territory, the geographically they are very varied from um, sea level, and there are some are growing in uh, high altitude, like three thousand five hundred meters on the high mountains. Right, therefore, uh, they have the over the middle of the year that evolved to look very very different to adapt to the uh, different climate uh, climatic uh, conditions and of the habitat they are. Uh, growing yeah and oh. um, one uh, also very unique thing about air plants is they are aphrodites meaning to say that they grow on trees they can be going on uh, be also be growing on rocks and they can be also 
some are way on the ground as well, right? So in terms of the where they are uh, growing and living, uh, it varies uh, uh, quite a quite quite a, quite a, there's a big range of uh, where they are growing as well. So therefore, uh, again, you know that what makes them very very unique. And what I really really like about uh, air plants is, you no, know, even though uh, they are a very uh, specific species or, or, or hybrids, but their forms are very very different, right? Some have long uh, curly curvy uh, curvy uh, leaves, but some are very short, and some are very um, so called uh, some are very uh, frosty, and some are very green as well. Okay, so maybe um, before I go on, let me show you some of the air plants that I've uh, specially prepared for all of you today so that I can actually show you uh, through the video. Okay? Sure. Right. So oh. this is air plants too, right? Oh. So this air plant is commonly known as uh, Spanish moss. That's the common name, right? So it, 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 it looks very uh, uh, kind of like hair-like. Yeah. And it usually it, hang, it hangs on tree trunks, okay. right? And they love uh, air, and then they love to have a sort of filtered light, uh, filtered light as well, right? And That's one of the most like, common air plants, like uh, like I, I saw uh, Daniel that you just uh, hold it and you just kept it like a cloth, so it 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 doesn't uh, spoil. So we never saw in uh, uh, plants that we can fold it and just put it aside. So that is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There is no soil, no water, nothing. You just show us, and then oh, <laughs> okay. That's that's the beauty of the <laughs> air plants. I would say when it's so neat and clean, nobody has to worried about the soil and water and a lot of these kinds of things. Amazing, amazing thing. Like I would say, yes, you are right to say that. Right. Okay. Maybe I show you the other one. Right. So um, this is another air plant called. Um, Tilensia funkiana, right? One more thing about air plants that I really love is they got very unique names, you know, <laughs> names that you are very, uh, it, it tickles you when you actually uh, call up their names. Like this is Tilensia funkiana, right? So this is how it looks like. Yeah. Right? All right. And um, this is um, the most, one of the most common one. Uh, this is called uh, Tilensia ionanta. Right, and uh, typically these are beginners plant, and you can actually buy them, uh, uh, like in our nursery for about two to three dollars sing dollars. Right, so I just want to let you know so that uh you know you can uh, maybe convert to your local currency and uh you know how much it costs. Yeah, and there are air plants that has this oh colorations. Right, and just one more thing about air plant that I think it really intrigues me, and I find it really amazing is some air plants has certain red pigments uh, within their leaves, and with um, red exposure to sun, they actually blushes. Right, so this one, uh, you know, looks very uh, red. Yeah, it looks right? awesome. Like a uh, <laughs> very new color, actually. It's it's like little bit neon color, I would say, uh, in maroon. Like if we see. Yeah. Uh, Little, little different actually. Uh, so, uh, do uh, these kinds of uh, uh, colorful uh, air plants require sunlight, Daniel? Because uh, we have uh, heard that if we want a color in maybe the house plants, like there are a lot of uh, house plants, so which has red color of leaves and maybe coleus or some other plants. So, uh, a lot of gardeners yes. suggest that we should give at least some amount of sunlight. To those plants so that the leaves can convert into that color so is the same thing right. applied into the air plants as well well i would say that you are right because um if you give uh bright uh sun for for uh, this plant here right uh, certain species right not all mm -hmm. the species that has a red pigmentation within the leaf they would actually show the red color when there is sufficient light Okay. Likewise, if you have to keep this indoor, right, without uh, much bright lights, then the, the, the red leaf will actually turn green. Okay, okay, great, great. Well, since you are talking about the colors, maybe I'll just share a bit more about um, this particular air plant. It's again the Ironanta, Tilensia Ironanta. 
And uh, what happened when you can see this particular plant if with this red leaf, right? That's one thing, another very amazing thing for our air plant is for this particular species, if they are about to bloom, right? That means they're going to flower. Okay. The leaf will actually turn red. Oh. Right. Automatically, they will turn red before they flower. So yes, yes, it was like telling you, hello, I'm going to flower soon. <laughs> <laughs> so air plant, right. but, the flowers, like, uh, 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 I, I'm not, uh, uh, like, I don't know about that. Like, do uh, air plants uh, gives flower also? Like, is it really true? Yes, they do uh, have a uh, very beautiful flowers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, today I all my plants are not flowering. Therefore, mm -hmm. I can only show you one that is about to bloom. Otherwise, okay. if it has bloomed, that means there would be a, a very bright um, purplish tubular flower, okay. right? That will be sticking up from within the center of this uh, plant here, right? Okay. Maybe I just want to elaborate more. Why? why this particular plant would turn red when it sort of comes to blooming is because in South and Central America, they are pollinated by hummingbirds. Okay. Right? And, and the red color will attract hummingbird. And then the tubular flower actually fits the, the beak of the flowering bird perfectly. So it's long and tubular. And then they will go in to stick, uh, stick the nectar from within the, the, the flowers and they're going to pollinate the flowers oh okay okay yeah so there's one more interesting fact about air plants right um yeah okay i got very i have one very very special plant which i'm going to show you and uh i personally like this plant a lot right and this particular species is called um tillandsia tectorium right i don't know how much uh y'all can see from the video but this plant it has evolved uh, uh, trichomes that evolved to become like hairs, right? Oh. I don't know whether can you see from the video. I, uh, yeah, it right. looks it looks silver to me actually. I uh, in on a camera, it looks like little silver and a wintry uh, air plant, like which can be most pop more okay. popular in winter. Little snow and something mm -hmm. like that. Yes, yes. It's a very it's a very fuzzy plant, right? Can, I think you can yeah. see from the camera that it has very uh it has like hair like structures already. It's no longer just flat uh stem structures, right? So this particular species of uh air plant called the Tilesia tectorium, it grows on very high up in the mountain, right? Whereby um the air can be very, very dry, and uh that's the reason why they evolved to have um hair covering all the leaves, right? And in fact, the whole plant is um, it, 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 it is very fuzzy uh, looking, uh, yeah, looking like a <laughs> some sort of a sea creature or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is one of my favorite, right? However, in Singapore climate, due to our high humidity and high, um, high heat and uh, temperature, it's actually quite a challenge to grow this very okay. well. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and it's ex and it is this particular species grow extremely slow. Okay. Extremely slow. Yeah. Oh, oh. So okay. what what is the uh like minimum? I I don't know what should I say a year or in months. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can see that growth yeah. in any basic air plant. What is the like number of minimum months or a year like? Right. Um, well, I would say that uh, it depends on the species again. Um, for a plant to be mature, it can take a couple of years to some the bigger uh, species of plant actually takes decades, right, to be actually fully mature. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's too slow, like mm. I would say, <laughs> very, very slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then you still can see the growth as long as you keep them uh, well and then give them the right conditions. Mm. Well, since we are talking about the um, conditions, maybe uh, let me elaborate on um, how what are the care tips for air plants, right? I think I'm sure our audience today will actually want to be very enthusiastic to say, hey, how am I going to grow them well, right? So uh, let me um, share with you the three very important factors, right? And it is so easy to remember and so simple. L, A, and W. 
you just remember law. L A W. Oh. Okay. L means light. Air plant enjoys bright filtered lights. Do not give them or rather expose them to very um, so-called um, high uh, so-called uh, midday uh, noon noon sunlight or direct sunlight direct exposure because the uh, it will burn the leaf right remember the leaf is something uh, very crucial for this plant here because it absorbs the nutrients and moisture therefore the uh, the leaf will be easily burned if you expose them to uh, bright uh, uh, direct sunlight right but however morning sun it will be quite fine right so that is a uh, bright filter light remember that the second point is uh, A, airflow, right? So air plant need a lot of air and therefore it's best to grow them uh, along uh, your corridors, your patio, at your balcony or next to your window whereby there is a breeze that actually you know sweep across mm -hmm. their leaves and, and they will grow very, very well there. Mm. Okay, so do not suffocate them and keep them uh, indoor, right? Like you know throughout like you know uh when when, when you grow them indoor don't you don't uh, uh, grow them in a very uh, dark and uh you know uh and a stuffy stuffy place all right and uh, last but not least uh water right w so they like uh well how i, I how i actually uh what uh, uh give my uh, plants uh, moisture is i'll use a hand sprayer and i'll just uh squirt the water and evenly and moist the leaf Okay. Right. That's what I do with the air plants. Right. So these three things are the most important thing that you need to remember for taking care of, uh, taking care of your air plants well. Great, great. Uh, Daniel, let's take one question. Actually, Melissa uh, is here. Yes. She's asking one question. So she has like, uh, hi. Thank you for hosting this speech. Uh, okay. My question is, what species of Tillensia, in your opinion, is the most challenging to grow in the climate of Singapore? Yes. Okay, I think I have mentioned before, the tectoria will be the one that is the most challenging because the, 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 the country that it comes from, right, is high mountains and has very dry air. And therefore, when it comes to Singapore, uh, we have high humidity and high heat and therefore, they are not really uh, 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 so acclimatized right, to our climate and therefore they are the most challenging to grow unless you can give them a very, very specific uh, condition whereby, you know, uh, uh, as their native uh, country uh, climate. Otherwise, uh, they'll be very, very challenging. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, so uh, there is one more question, Daniel. Uh, uh, how are these plants grow initially, either from seeds or anything else? Okay, well, uh, yes, I'm going to come to this point here. Um, uh, one of the very, again, very amazing uh, thing about air plants is they can produce um, in two ways. One would be, we call it asexual reproductions, meaning to say after the plant were to uh, mature, and after they flower, right, they will grow these little cute tiny pups, right? We call these the pups or the babies, right? From the mother plant. Okay. Right. And these are the pups that will uh be you'll be growing and taking nutrients from the mother plant. And once they are about one third or slightly bigger than the uh about half the mother plant, you'll be able to actually detach them. And then you can grow them separately, right? And uh, just to illustrate to you, what I did with the pups is I did this very um, cute uh, picture frame with with the plant that was the baby pup attached to this uh, branch here, right? Oh, so you can actually uh, make, make very creative, um, so called, um, yeah. Uh, well, That's... I can say decoration, decorative plus. Yeah, so right. nice, uh, Daniel. So you uh, separated this pub from the mother plant and then you attached it. Okay, okay. Yes, that's right. And okay, then the second way that air plants will be uh, 
be able to be grown from you'll be also like most plant will be from seeds right therefore um just now i mentioned before when air plant flowers right so this is another uh air plant uh hybrid wow. right this is a much bigger plant and 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 just to uh, recall back right i say that some plant they grow uh, quite long and they are able to uh, i mean it take quite a long while to actually mature so this plant may, may be uh, you're talking about uh, the one in my head here probably is more than 10 years old okay all right and uh, this is what we call the uh, inflorescence so once in which maturity the air plant will spike and have this uh, uh what we call the uh, inflorescence and the inflorescence and where the flower uh, appeared from will be appearing from here right the one that you are looking at is actually the, the withered flower of this particular uh, mother plant right mm. so these are all the flowers right that was supposed to be uh, you know when it was a blooming is a uh, purplish in color but now it's all uh, withered so uh, as i'm saying if the flower is actually um, been pollinated right uh, it will actually produce a seed pot, right? And this seed pot will eventually ripen and you get you get dried and then it will actually split open. And what you can find within the seed pots will be the seeds of the air plant. And I'm going to show you how does the seed look like. Can you oh, see? It's like a fur. Yes. It's just like some uh, cotton, you know, like cotton seeds. Cotton, yeah, true, right? true, true, yeah. I... Yes. Right, so um, the seeds will be dispersed by the wind, right? And it was going to be carried by the wind and eventually it's going to rest on some branches or some cliff rocks. And with the right condition, then they will germinate and we have a new generation of uh, baby air plants. So that's typically this two way that uh, air plants are grown. Uh, or, or rather propagates yeah okay okay so uh how to germinate uh daniel if i have missed like because this this looks like far totally like cotton so how would it germinate like in so hard plant like air plant it's so hard so how this will get yes okay since uh, you know i mean like unlike plant, other plants you actually put them in the soil right yeah so in order for you to uh, germinate this um the, this furry seeds right you have to actually uh, uh typically we use a netting right or a, 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 a stocking netting you know mm. and uh we put the air plant on top mm. of this netting and then uh, and to make sure that the, uh, this this plant is wet and okay. once it's wet it clings onto the netting and you got to consistently keep it moist for it to germinate right so you cannot be too dry or too wet Mm. uh in order for the plants the baby plant to grow very well oh okay okay so like it's like a paper towel method that we say for a very tiny seeds to germinate like okay okay okay, yes. okay. Yes. great 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 and uh over here maybe i just want to show you how the seed pot uh, typically you look like can you see right on top of this this is the seed pots and that is, this is where the seed comes from, right? Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So these, uh, like, I, I can see the mouth is open from the top, some, uh, like, it's like a cone and the uh, from the top that you pointed out. So, okay, from that part, yes. uh, we get this furry cotton seed uh, of, okay, 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 okay. Great, yes. great, great. So how yes. old this plant is, like, when a plant get mature to give... Uh, so many seeds or mm. like uh, this kind of seeds well um okay um taking note that uh, just now i said that actually air plants grow in two ways one would be from uh, pups one mm. would be from seedlings you see the one that uh, if you grow from seedling it will take um, a much more longer for the plant to be fully mature and to actually eventually flowers so okay. by going from seeds, uh, sorry, uh, going from pups, it'll be much faster. So it actually varies. And of course, uh, it also varies from species to species or hybrid to hybrid. So typically, uh, like this, the Dilense Ayananta, if you grow a pup, right, from uh, about this size, right, it's about uh, two to three years, you can actually get the plant to mature and uh, flower. 
So this one is uh, the most common and easiest to, uh, to see them flowering again. Okay, okay. Great, great, great. So, uh, uh, shall I put one more question, Daniel? Uh, sure. Uh, okay, so uh, one person is asking, like, how to shape air plants curler, like the leaves, uh, how to curl those leaves uh, or how to maintain them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's a pretty interesting question. And I was, must say that it, it's a good question too, because uh, one more thing I like about air plants, you can actually groom them to uh, like, you know, as if like you're grooming your hairstyles or, or you know, uh, like, you know, you want, you do want them to be in a certain style or shape, you can actually uh, do a little bit of, uh, we call it, uh, I call it grooming or styling, right? So maybe I'll show you this um, air plant, which is behind me, right? Yes. Isn't this uh, cute? <laughs> Well, um, okay, this is called uh, Tillandsia Zerographica, right? Nice name, yeah? So this geographic, Tillandsia Zerographica have very, very stiff, um, but very curly and uh, wavy leaves. So in order for you to actually groom them, right? Now, currently, this air plant is considered pretty well hydrated. So when they are well hydrated, the leaves tend to be more perky, right? That means they'll be like, uh, more erected and then you know it's more curved but however today if you want to um, uh, make them uh, so-called uh, more the leaf more curly and maybe appears longer what you can do is you can actually stop misting them or watering them for the next one month and dehydrate them right well I, I mean if you want to do that right not that you must do that but if you want to see the curls if you are able to dehydrate them and what you'll see that when they are dehydrated, all the leaves will tend to droop, right? Further. Yeah. And then all this yeah. will start to curl even more. True, true. So true. actually you can uh, get them to get them to curl up by using this method. Oh, it's right. it's maybe I'll show you another one that maybe I'll show you another one that's behind me with this big one. <laughs> This is again, uh, this is this the, the smaller geographical, and this is the medium sized geographical, right? Mm. So you can imagine how the large size geographical looks like. True, true. So you can see it has very, very nice curly uh, leaves, right? So um, you can do the same thing to this plant. But at this moment, this plant is pretty hydrated. As you can see, the, the leaf here is actually quite bulky. But the one that's on the uh, bottom is more uh, dry and therefore it's more curly. Oh, great, great. So, uh, Daniel, just want to know and maybe our audience would like to understand that there is nothing, yes. right, uh, below this plant? No container, nothing? <laughs> okay, um, yes, maybe talk about that. Let's talk about the roots since you're talking about the bottom of the plants. Well, um, air plants do have roots, right? However, um, their roots are not meant to uh, absorb nutrient and moisture, right? It's the leaf that's doing so. However, you look at the roots, right? They are um, very, very wiry and they are very, very strong, right? And the reason why they need to be, uh, be so because when the air plant is, say, for example, uh, high up on the branch on the tree, right? They need mm. to cling on to the tree very, very firmly and securely so they will not be blown away or, you know, or due to high wind or maybe animals knock it over or whatever. So the leaf is very wiry and strong to hold the plant onto where it could be rock, it could be branches too, right? So there are roots, as you can see, right? There are roots. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and some can have as many as, you know, very thick roots like this. Oh, okay, okay. So is it required mm -hmm. to separate it from the plant when you, when we have, like, uh, if, if we bought a plant from a nursery and it contains uh, roots like uh, this that you have shown, so is it required to separate it from the plant or we can use it the way it is, like... Uh, 
Well, of course, if you prefer um, the plant to, you know, to have the roots, it's okay to leave them on, right? And um, I typically, I for me, uh, I, I do trim, I like, sometimes I do like to trim it off. Okay. Um, for some plants to look, so it looks aesthetically more, uh, you know, um, uh, more, uh, for the aesthetically more beautiful rather than have all the uh, mm. roots sticking out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. True. Okay. And, and just to share with you more, uh, this is how I actually uh, grow them. So I I I, I use uh, this uh, uh, plastic coated wires, right? So these are very thin plastic coated wires, and I just sit the uh, air plants on onto these uh, these wires, and I'll just hang it up in my nursery or my garden. Right? And, and you can do so in your balconies. Great. <laughs> it looks so beautiful. <laughs> okay, maybe just to share one more. Um, there are many ways you can uh, grow your air plants, right? One way, of course, is to hang them. Um, uh, and as you know, air plant can be um, grown in many, many uh, different, uh, uh, in, uh, many different, many different ways. This is another way that I grow them. Um, typically, these are the smaller plants that are I'll, I'll use this method. So basically, it's very simple. It's just a piece of a cork board, a cork bar, sorry, cork bar, and there's this aluminum wire that is actually um, so called. Um, I, I what I do is I I, I, I drill through the the cork bar and I attach the aluminum wires. And what I do with this plant is I use a special glue and I glue it on to this cork bar, and then it will just grow in this manner. Great, <laughs> and maybe just to show one more, uh, one more way that you can actually grow them, uh, in a more aesthetic uh, uh, a way that uh, you can actually use a piece of pebbles, right? And you just again, uh, I'll I'll glue on the the uh, uh, the air plants onto these pebbles, and in, in time to come, you know, uh, this this one single plant can become two two new ones from the mother plant. Okay. Yeah, so that's another way you can do so as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, so uh, one question, Daniel. Uh, so yes. Melissa is asking that uh, one of the most annoying pests I en uh, encountered was spider mites. So uh, can I just wash them uh, off from water or maybe uh, any other pesticides? Well, um, yes. Um, the I, I would say I agree, totally agree with you because spider mite is one of the very uh, annoying pests that uh, most uh, air plant grow actually encounters. And so far, I think they are the uh, one of the worst kind of uh, pests that you encounter. But unlike potted plants, they have much lesser uh, uh, so-called uh, pests. That I must stress this because uh, air plants they are not succulents. You know, they are not like fleshy. So. Um, the aphids, the millibugs, actually they don't really, uh, you know, uh, uh, bothers air plant, but spider mite do. And uh, you can't flush spider mite away, but uh, do uh, remember that spider mite likes uh, very dry places, right? And they like to hide uh, in corners. Therefore, as long as you keep your air plants very well hydrated, uh, uh, usually uh, that would deter spider mite from finding homes uh, underneath their leaves or whatsoever. And if really you encounter spider mites and what spider mite will do to your plants is they will chew away the surface of your plant, right? Especially the top or the bottom of the plant, whereby they'll chew away the coral field, the surface of the plant. And it, it does make your plant looks kind of like uh, uh, like yellowish, you know, because they cannot photosynthesize properly anymore. So you turn a bit yellowish and you can see there's patches of a uh, 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 yellowish patch. Therefore, one way to get rid of spider mite, right, is I would uh, uh, advise you is to soak them first, right, to soak thoroughly in, in the water. And after which, after you remove them from the water, you have to use some sort of a pesticide or chemicals to get rid of them. Okay, great. Uh, Daniel, can you please uh, tell the name of the glue again? Actually, a lot of people asking in the chat that uh, <laughs> what is that glue? 
or I must ask the glue magnify, uh, manufacturer to paste me. <laughs> okay, um, this, will be, this will be the glue that I've been using. Uh, it's called the E6000. Right. Okay. Actually, this is an industrial glue. However, uh, for some reason, it does not harm the plant at all. And, uh, and it's very, uh, well, one thing is this is not super glue, right? So it takes uh, 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 some time for the glue to be fully dried. Uh, we want to use it to uh, glue the air plants onto certain uh, objects or, 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 or surface, right? Uh, but then this, uh, this, this uh, glue, uh, glue very well, very secure, plus uh, it dries clear. So you cannot really see the mark of the glue when it is fully dried. Okay, okay. Great, 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 great. Okay, okay. So, uh, like, uh, we have one more, uh, person. Yep. Uh, so, uh, she's asking like, uh, um, the hair like air plants. The older parts tends to be dried up, dry up as they grow downwards. Okay. So, do they? Uh, do we need to cut them down, or uh, because it doesn't look greenish? So when it's all dried up, or will it still keep keep growing? Actually, I, I think she has mixed all the things. So basically, she's asking that when it grows very long, so uh, is it required to cut them off, or it keeps on still growing because the lower down the part of that uh, hairy uh, waves, it keeps on drying very fast. So it doesn't look that greenish. Uh, so. Uh, what to do with that? Like, as you showed us, na, the hairy plant, which has a long hairs. So for yeah. that, the bottom part of that string, I would say, the one string that is coming from the uh, center. So when it keeps on growing for a long, the uh, tip of that, uh, uh, it, it starts drying up, actually. It happens in pineapple also, the basic uh, uh, thing, if we see. So do we have to cut them off? or uh, because it doesn't look beautiful in the plant, so. Right. Okay. Maybe I show you one example which I have, which, uh, yeah, is very really, uh, unique. <laughs> okay. Right. This uh, yeah. is called. Is this a hybrid? Is called the Tillandsia cotton candy, right? Mm -hmm. It looks edible, right? <laughs> no. Okay. So what what happened to this uh this plant here, cotton candy? Okay. Usually. I think you uh, you have to agree with me that um, as the plant grows, the leaf, the older leaf will tend to actually get dry, right? Because, well, for any for any living thing, you know, when you are old, you get you know, uh, withered, you know, you you die off, right? So usually it occurs at the leaf at the bottom, right? So, like for example, in this example, this 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 leaf has grown for so many uh, so, so many years, right? There will be definitely be old leaf that will be uh, uh, withered and dry, right? So of course I would say that I'll encourage you to remove this leaf because okay. um, for the fact the reason is they do not want spider mites right to be living in these old leaves because mm -hmm. I was telling you spider mites like dry places, right? And if they like to be hidden uh, uh, within the leaf, uh, within the plant itself, right? So it's good to remove them. And I, I would say secondly is uh, when you water, because these leaves are not functioning as uh, absorbing uh, moisture anymore because they can't. So by leaving this leaf uh, on, on the plant, there's a tendency that this leaf soak out the water and it does not dry up uh, quickly. And air plants, if you were to uh, um, um, have um, cumulative uh, water retention within the air plant, they easily rot too, right? So you don't want your plant to uh, rot as well. So it's best to remove them. So you can simply just peel them away, the olden leaf that is really dry or light. Okay. So please do that. Great, great, great. Okay. Great. So um, what are the other tips and tricks, Daniel, to take care of these air plants? Because, uh, yeah, uh, like... Because, see, uh, if I would ask from my side in India, so uh, it's so mm. entangled, right? Like the long one, the middle size and the smaller size that you showed. So there might be a chance that 
ants might start coming and hiding inside that small uh, areas of that yeah. so because it's so entangled so do we have to wash them daily and then dried up because this method i heard in india that what they do they uh, wash it off and then they put it in sun to dry it properly and then they like keep it wherever they want to keep it right okay uh, typically there's two ways that you can water your air plants one would be the method i say that i use a spray and i'll uh, wet them right thoroughly uh, and then there's another method that um, people would sometimes use also they'll soak it in water right they'll leave it there for like half an hour or one hour and then you remove it and then after that it overturns so that all the water will drip out and then they hang it back there right so there's two ways i would say that um, typically in singapore uh, because our, our weather is very humid right so um typically i would only um so advise to spray it as far as possible because you do not want uh, too much moisture trapped within the leaf because uh, one common uh, fat fat fatality for air plants is water retains within this leaf here. Can, mm. can you imagine that if, let's say, the water were to, you know, this, this, this plant has a lot of uh, layers and if water were to uh, remain there and they are not fully dried and the next day you water, you water them again, uh, they will cause rotting and what rotting is the uh, number one fat uh, fatality for air plants right sometimes people are just too enthusiastic you know to keep on watering them but actually you can't do that so in between uh, watering you got to make sure that the uh, air plants are fully dry to avoid rotting right so um when do you use a uh, um, soaking method i would say that if you are talking about in singapore if let's say you are a, the kind of person that's very very busy right you don't have time to uh, mist spray your air plants uh, very often, then you can do the soaking once in a week. That means you soak it, make sure it's fully hydrated, right? You overturn, you hang it there, and for the next one week, you do not have to water it anymore because you are done your soaking. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It's clear. Yeah, it's 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 pretty clear now, actually. Like, this is the right uh, thing. Okay, great. So uh, one more question, Daniel, like people are asking about the liquid liquid fertilizer. Do you use any liquid fertilizer in the sprayer that you mm. like the water that you use? Well, um, yes, I OK. Um, theore theoretically, right, air plants do not need any fertilizer because they have the ability to absorb nutrients and moisture from the air. And, but having said that, right, um, typically um, Singapore, we use uh, tap water unless you can get rainwater to water your plants because that has natural, uh, I would say, uh, dissolved nutrients in the water if you're using rainwater. But typically, let's say you're talking about tap water, then there isn't any nutrients in it. So therefore, I do use fertilizer for my plants. And um, when you talk about fertilizer, um, I would recommend orchid fertilizer or fertilizer for foliage plants. However, when it comes to the recommended dosage, I would, uh, I would advise you to actually um, half or quarter it to make, uh, to make it even uh, more dilute because air plants typically, they cannot absorb so much of uh, fertilizer at one go. Therefore, it could be dilute uh, uh, from the uh, recommended dosage so that your air plants have the time and uh, they can slowly absorb. But however, for, for you to uh, do that, you have to probably, uh, I would suggest that you actually um, fertilize your air plants like, you know, once a week with a very small dosage so that they can actually grow much faster and they can also bloom much better. Okay, okay, great, 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 great. Um... Nice. So uh, anything else, uh, Daniel, like uh, so a lot of people uh, used to ask uh, us, the gardeners, that how the basic gardening happens in Singapore. If you can just put a light for five to ten minutes about that, <laughs> people would love to know about that. Like what are the common th flowers and things uh, grow in Singapore uh, atmosphere? <laughs> Well, I think um, if every, everyone is like, you know, have a Instagram account, if you look at your Instagram account, now the most popular plants are all the foliage, 
plants, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, likewise in Singapore, you know, there is a like this craze about all these uh, um, South American uh, foliage plants, you know. Um, uh, therefore, uh, the, I would say that typically, I think Singaporeans we are all uh, very um, we are all plant lovers, and uh, well, uh, we we are a city in nature, <laughs> so uh, we are surrounded by greeneries, and therefore also I think um, from top down approach, the government is also encouraging um, us to actually. Um, to grow more plants, you know, to clean up our living uh, environment. Uh, and I think one thing I would like to point out is um, Singapore being a very small island state, uh, we are actually suffering from this thing called the island heat effect because our country is small and yet we have a lot of built up areas. And therefore with the, our heat, right, tropical sun, uh, our island tend to have this um, increased temperature during uh, the very, very uh, hot season, right? Typically by uh, an increase of three to four uh, cel degrees Celsius of uh, temperature. And therefore, in order to keep the heat down and to make it more livable, uh, we, Singapore, Singapore, we are uh, very um, doing a lot of greening effort to make sure that we have parks, we have gardens, and our buildings are, you know, having uh, more uh, you can say there's rooftop gardens and so on and so forth. And I think if every one of us like, you know, contribute and uh, grow our own uh, plants at home, I think that will definitely help. So um, Singaporeans, uh, we are we are doing that, yeah, partly for survival, I think. <laughs> That's great. Everyone should do. I would say like all the viewers who are listening to us right now, at least put a, a little bit effort to grow at least one vegetable of your own that you're consuming in a day. That would really change a lot of thing uh, into sustainability, into environment, I would say, like whatever government is doing and nearby us, like we saw a lot of people are doing that effort. So we should definitely appreciate it and put at least our start from one person and then you will never get to know like how will it convert into 100 percent because gardening is such a hobby like it attracts us when we start once we started so right great said great said uh Daniel. and i would like to also elaborate that uh air plants right they are so um low maintenance right i mean i explained how uh, to take i uh, explained how to take care of them and and i think if you were to hang your air plants you know in your apartments you know and and they don't take out a lot of space in fact i can even string my air plant from one from one to the other right okay so for this mechanism here okay. yeah. right <laughs> nice <laughs> so there's a lot of um you know space savings you don't you don't need a a big garden you don't need a big balcony to, to grow your air plants so with a small areas and typically a lot of us are staying in hdbs you know our, we call it our, our flats are called hdb or apartments condominiums right so with even uh, your your windows you know you can actually grow air plants and and beautify them yeah and beautify your environment too and one more thing is air plant is known to be a natural air purifier because there have been studied in states that they are able to absorb toxic uh, uh, chemicals from the air so they are also being used in the states as a bio uh, biometer to detect pollutions, right? So air plants clean our air as well. So definitely, you want your environment to uh, yeah, but want to have clean environment, go air plants. True, true. Definitely, it's a space uh, saving plant because it doesn't require water, no soil, no. Uh, uh, problem of uh, mosquitoes and all those things because it's not yes. uh, like uh, we are not uh, holding it in a water for a long days so definitely it's it's uh, uh, very good to grow and uh, that's so good yeah a lot of people are saying thank and you let's pass on. <laughs> oh <laughs> a lot of people are thanking you, Daniel, to answering their questions. Uh, and they are saying that you have a very good collection of air plants. And in India also, I saw a lot of people are asking from where to buy, from where to buy. <laughs> Just try, <laughs> try it out in your nurseries, guys. Like, ask your nursery person to uh, arrange it 
from somewhere or maybe if someone has try to exchange it uh, by giving some other plant to them so swapping and exchanging the plants are really good therapy to do uh, you can make much more friends mm -hmm. nearby uh, garden friends plant friends what we say in our terms so that's do you do the same thing uh, daniel at your place also is it like a thing to exchange plants with each other because in india it's a very common thing like people living in apartments they uh, do monthly uh, things and they exchange the plants maybe even even in non uh, festivals also i i saw a lot of places everyone has to grow uh, some uh, propagate some plant and then then they exchange with mm -hmm. each other so that ki uh, at least i have one new variety of plant in my house so yes well i i'll say that yes here we also practice uh, you know going and then we can give our pups away to you know your friends and uh, i would say that it's it's so easy let me show you right let's say i have a clump here right these are multiple um clump i mean this is a clump of multiple uh, pups so what, what i can do is i can easily just detach them right oh okay right? so you can see right i can out of this clump i can have so many pups and then you can have like give to 10 friends if you have 10 pups and and and, and, and you just go on and go on right okay yeah. oh, so nice so many air plants now <laughs> true true yes true. And what I would also encourage people to do, right? Don't uh, maybe don't just give them as pup, right? What you can do is just a little more effort huh. to make a little gift like this, right? True. Say for example, Christmas, right? You you glue your air plants onto a, a pebbles, and you add a cherry, right? That will look, make very lovely um, uh, Christmas presents. True. True. That's that's. Just a small effort and we can convert this uh, cute plant into a very nice and beautiful gift for our loved ones. And they will remember us for a long time. So that's definitely truly said, truly said. And that's also one of the fun thing about growing air plants is you can make little uh, decorative uh, display to give away as presents, right? And of course, later I'm going to show you how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then uh, tell uh, audience something about your place to visit. Uh, a lot of people are asking uh, that uh, is it open to public? Uh, when can we come and visit to your nursery? <laughs> well, uh, who uh, who are the person that's asking? Are they Singaporeans or? In, yeah, yeah, in yeah. yeah. Singaporeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Singaporeans. Okay, okay. Well, uh, in uh, for 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 uh, for my foreign friends, uh, I think we wait to, uh, until you know that we can travel. I'll definitely like to welcome you to uh, Singapore and uh, show you my air plants, right? So for Singaporean, yes, I have a place called the Abata, right? Um, it's a it's a my own private garden that's open for public viewing, and uh, it's strictly by appointments. So if you like to uh, contact me and uh, make appointment with me, you can uh, join me and search for me in Instagram, uh, Air Plant Artisan, right? And uh, follow me, and then you'll be able to uh, find my contact. And then from there onwards, you can just uh, uh, DM me, private message me, and fix the appointment. Yeah, I'm 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 ready to open for everyone, um, seven days a week from um, nine to five. Yes. But okay. I must say, during this COVID period, there's restriction. I can only entertain one visitor at a time. Until further notice, you know, then uh, I'll let you all you know if I can uh, uh, have more visitors. Yeah. Great, great, great. I hope uh, we have uh, Daniel has answered the question of your uh, visit. Uh, so you can definitely visit uh, his page and uh, do check over there. You can DM him and he will guide you how to uh, book uh, an appointment with him to visit his nursery uh okay daniel so we are just left with few minutes any tips and tricks uh anything that you would like to end up with your workshop today um i I'm, i want to show how to uh do a little simple display yeah yeah definitely definitely yes 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 so uh, like what I said, right, I think uh, one, one, one more interesting about uh, keeping air plants is you can make very, very uh, nice decorative uh, display uh, to be put in your house, all right, and then of course to give it uh, away as friends. 
And I would say that um, this is one example you can actually um, you know use it like a art and craft, right? To to mm -hmm. to make something uh, creative and give it away, especially for festive seasons. Um, I have some here. Maybe I just show you some example before I uh, go on, right? But you can definitely okay. find uh, interesting wood like this, right? And uh, what you need to do is just uh, yeah, a glue and um, you can glue them on, and it's a very nice display, right? Oh, true. And not to forget, right? Uh, this is a little display I've uh, done uh, in the year of the red, right? <laughs> so it's a very uh, cute porcelain red with uh, two air plants, right? Yeah, I'm quite sure you can find all this material uh, in your local nurseries or your uh, local aquariums. And that's where I find all my uh, these materials from. Great, great. Right. So should I proceed to uh, um, do these little uh, demonstrations? Sure, sure, Daniel. Go ahead. Okay, sure. Right, so uh, before we start, right, um, I always like to use natural materials. Okay. Right, maybe I just... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, so I like to use natural materials like wood or uh, it could be a piece of stone like this, right? So these are very good base for you to um, um, uh, use it for design for your air plant display or it could be a combination of a wood and the rocks together, right? Depending on how are you going to uh, uh, create your art piece, right? So. Hmm. For today, I will just go very simple with a piece of wood. And first and foremost, make sure that the wood is uh, stable, right? So that it will not, uh, you know, topple over or it will not be, uh, uh, not, not, uh, make sure it's very stable. And, um, well, you will need some tools here, right? Scissors and um, a pencil and, of course, the glue. Okay. Okay. So these are the basic tools for making a small little uh, uh, art piece, right? And uh, let us start with uh, this Ironanta, Lancia Ironanta, right? So before you uh, glue your plants onto your this um, base, make sure you trim away all the brown dried leaf and any that's at the bottom, right? So you can okay. just uh, trim it off. Or you can simply just peel it off. Right? So I'm just going to just uh, do a very uh, fast one to show you. Okay? And um, next, this is the glue I'm talking about. And when you glue your air plants onto the wood, for example, make sure you just use enough and uh, tap okay. the glue onto the bottom, right, of this air plant. Hmm. Okay. And what you're going to do next is you're going to make sure you place it onto the wood very firmly. Okay. And you just have to wait for about um, one to two hours for the wood to be dry. However, you don't have to keep on holding it. Make sure you just give a very firm uh, press and then you can just leave it there and wait, wait for it to dry. Okay? Hmm. I have an example here which I have already um, glued my air plants on. Oh. Right? So this is uh, another I already uh, done uh, beforehand. I just want to show you that, well, other than air plants, you can actually add some. Um, moss here these are reindeer moss i think you can uh, get this from your local nursery as well they mm -hmm. are real moss right however they are preserved right and what you're going to do is do have some accessories right it could be seashells that you pick from your beach it could be mushrooms like this it could be um cockles or it could be things like berries and it can be also these ladybirds 
right? Depending on what kind of theme that you are going to create. For example, today, I'm going to make a Christmas gift for a friend. So after having this plant glued on and dried, and with this reindeer moss, and to just get that festive feel of Christmas, right? I'll just, um, of course, I'll probably put some glue here. And I'm just going to put it here, right? So there you have it. A very simple air plant display that you can use it to decorate your house or to give it as a friend for Christmas. True, true. It's 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 very uh, beautiful actually, and it's a part of. Uh, it can become a part of garden. I would say it's not just like a showpiece that we get in outside in the shop or something, which is which is artificial, like uh, like uh, any other fabric of. Uh, flowers or something like that it's, it's naturally so so daniel how to take care of uh, this air plant after getting stick on this wooden part so can we spray as we do the same like as mm, yes well so, uh, since this uh, water plant, spray uh, yeah i use a, a spray to actually uh, spray onto the plants yes okay okay yeah. but of course you leave you leave this kind of display. You can leave it. I mean, you can bring it indoor, but after mm. a while, you got to bring it outdoor, right? With a bright filter lights, good airflow, and mm. you mist it so that they can continue to grow. True, true, true. Yeah. yeah. Because the soaking method will not work over here. So uh, only the sprayer can help uh, uh, for these air plants. Yes. You are right to say that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. That's so amazing. <laughs> I would say a lot of people should start working on this Christmas gift for their friends. And uh, <laughs> nice idea. Dipavali is coming, right? Dipavali is coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dipavali is coming. True. <laughs> Daniel, you remember. <laughs> it's Yes. And you can you can make a um, fantastic display with, uh, you know, well, maybe not cherries, right? How about maybe you change to something uh, like a peacock? True. Yeah, if a peacock yeah. uh, feathers, yeah. you know, or or some uh, motif, you know, yeah. True. You, you can, you know, make, make that match and, and yeah. Yeah. something I, I, uh, very... Uh, yeah, I, I get it, Daniel. I'll, I'll definitely try. In India, it's really difficult to get the air plants because as I said, it, it costs huge. It costs very, very costly. So, but... That is a very nice idea, actually, if we have one or maybe if we having a lot of pubs and from a long time, we can definitely try it out to make something like this to gift it. So very mm -hmm. amazing idea, I would say. Great, great. Uh, so, so guys, uh, you can visit uh, Daniel's channel uh, again uh, uh, to see uh, all these artwork uh, that he has made so that you will get a lot of ideas, not just one that he showed here. So please visit his channel uh, to see the other ideas too so that you can help get help uh, how to make other kind of stuff, whatever is available. Uh, and do, uh, like, if you need any help, I would say you can definitely check with Daniel and you can text us also. We, can, we would definitely try to help you out. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. So amazing. So, okay, Daniel. So anything uh, you would like to uh, say to all our audience in the end of this session? Okay, sure. Well, um, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope that uh, after this session you get to love air plants and uh, you, I'm sure you are going to get to know them better, you love them even more. Uh, one thing I would say that uh, from these many years of growing air plants, I'm, I want to say this is um, a lot of times we thought that uh, we are taking care of plants, right? Whatever you're growing, right? Maybe roses, maybe um, of some fruit trees, whatever, um, of course, air plants, um, you thought that, um, you know, we are taking care of them, right? But I want to tell you is actually they are taking care of us as well, right? Because in the midst of, um, you know, doing the um, the misting of air plants, uh, trimming mm -hmm. the dead leaf, you know, something very therapeutic, right? So if you are very much involved uh, in gardening, right, in general gardening, 
it's a very dyna dynamic activities. So it keep you very focused, keep you very occupied, keep you very um, at peace, right? So by doing so, uh, you actually benefit a lot in terms of our psychological and mental uh, well-being, right? Especially during this uh, COVID period, I encourage um, every one of you, right, just to uh, grow something, right? Because after a while, trust me, you will see the benefit, and the benefit comes well from not only your satisfaction, but so also for your own uh, well-being as a person. Yeah, so do it, do it. Great. Thank you, Daniel, for uh, doing this workshop with us today and uh, uh, guiding us on how to do this, uh, uh, like how to maintain air plans, I would say. In India, it's not that much popular, but uh, I would say like we have solved a lot of problems regarding this for Singaporeans and uh, and many more people who will watch it later also, I would say. So thank you all of you to join us today in this session to uh, sit with us for one hour and watching us thoroughly and uh, asking the questions i hope uh, i have covered all the questions and if i have missed something uh, please uh, uh, you can dm us also or you can directly uh, check out it with daniel uh, so thank you all of you for uh, joining us today in this workshop and thank you daniel for uh, doing this amazing workshop with us and uh, I would say all of us <laughs> enjoyed it a lot and it's my pleasure it's my pleasure great 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 mm -hmm. so thank you so much thank you so much Daniel bye-bye thank you thank you see you guys